exciting to be here. Um, you know, the quality of the talk, of the speaker, of the theme, I feel a little bit like the clown here. Uh, when, um, when I had to pick a job, you know, I, wanted to, I was sure of one thing. I wanted to do something where whether I screw up, nobody will get hurt or die. Um, <laughs> you're laughing, but it doesn't leave you with a lot of options. Um, <laughs> Mainly you can be a, a teacher or an artist. Since I didn't have uh, good grades and I had zero talent, I chose to make video games. Um, and uh, for the last uh, almost 20 years, gosh, doesn't make me any younger, um, cost a lot of money for this hair. Uh, I, uh, I worked you know, under, the, under the big top. Under the big top means that you know, I was doing these big games, these big console games, uh, that takes you know years of effort, you know dozens of millions of dollars to uh, to make. And the last year or two years were a big change in uh, in my life. You know, I, I went from under the big top to being a street entertainer. I still the same clown, but uh, a different one. You know, beforehand a few years ago, I was you know inviting you to buy a ticket, a pricey ticket, you know, around sixty to seventy dollars. I was invited you to take your car or the bus or the metro, go to see the circus, park your car. It was like a kind of a two hours experience. Sit down, you know, the, lime, uh, the light are, are dimming and, and you watch a long, exciting show where you care about what's going on. You know, you are sometimes a little bit afraid. Now it's different. I'm on the street. You know, it's the same analogy for the big video game and the game that now you're playing on a cell phone. Most of you here, 70% of the people having smartphones are playing video games, for instance. I'm on the street, I'm trying to catch your attention. You want, don't want to stop, really. You know, I have to do something really special to, 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 to attract your attention. And you're going to stop. By the way, the more people are stopping, the more there is a chance you're going to stop and start watching the show. Then after every 30 seconds, you want to leave because you have something else to do. I have to find something to capture your attention and to make you stay. And then, you know, after two or three minutes, because you're not going to stay that long, you know, I need to do something to, to deserve your dollar. And this is a completely shift in my career and in what I'm doing, because obviously, from the big top, you know, this big game that you go buy at uh, Future Fraud, Best Buy, Walmart, to this type of entertainment is totally different. And by the way, you know, you do one street entertainer, and then you do another one, and then another one, there's a big chance that at night, you know, you don't want to go see a circus show because you just have all this entertainment by small pieces, you know, all day long. And why are they so successful? Because this form, new form of digital entertainment or games are respecting the way you live and they're more adapted to what you're doing. So I feel, you know, this is huge change. You know, I'm in the middle of the big shift and uh, that's pretty original. When you look at it, and you look at more the, the story of entertainment, this ship shift existed before. I'll take an example, the 1950s, with the movie industry and the TV. You know, TV existed before 1950, but in the 50s, this is where really people start staying more at home and watching TV than going to the theater. And uh, the, the, the big movie studio, they, you know, they were flipping out. A little bit like now the big video game company are flipping out. And I was flipping out. Um, they say, what do we do? So they're not going to say to, see, uh, to go to see Elizabeth Taylor and Charlton Heston and Cecil B. They say, do TV series. Intrinsically, they're not ready for it. So they start reacting. What they do, you know, they do less movies. You know, is, this is from a generation, there was like double feature with a show in the middle. So they start doing from, you know, from 1950 to 1960, they reduce the amount of movie by, you know, 200 or 300% doesn't work. People are still watching TV and staying at home. So what they do, they do better movies. And uh, arguably the 50s are, you know, the golden age of, uh, of uh, movie. You know, you have Singing in the Rain, my personal favorite, uh, and uh, Dr. Zivago and all these good things. Still, people are still staying at home rather than going to watch uh, movies and going to the theater. They do bigger movies, you know, this is when they do the Ben-Hur and, um, and the Ten Commandments. Something to really say, it's so incredible, the movies, please come. Rather than staying at home and watching, you know, I Love Lucy. 
and uh, people still stay at home in a meaningful uh, way. So they do the ultimate things. They reduce the price from 1952 to 1959. They reduce the price from around 20 or 30 percent. If you fast forward from 1950 to 1970, most of the big uh, movie studio were sold or acquired by TV companies, cable companies, and external foreign interests. The movies are still here, but they're not the dominant form. Why? Because TV was more adapted to, uh, to what was going on, and it was free, a totally new business model. You know, instead of going to the theater and paying for your, at the time, 50 cents, you, know, you were able to go and watch something free. So this personal reflection first, you know, about me changing, you know, kind of a, a career. Then seeing this analogy, I started like thinking, you know, what's now between all this entertainment? What are the differences between all the different forms of entertainment? And it's just a matter of a few letters. The first letter is the letter C. You know, in normal classic media, you care. So you can care about the story of a penguin somewhere. If it's very well written and, and shot, you know, you'll have some emotions. It's incredible. You know, it will be the same thing if you talk about any type of story of a flower, of, of a butterfly, or somebody you know, who's, uh, who has problems. If it's well said, you'll care about it, and you'll be very excited. In my usual business, you know, I take out the letter C, and it's you are. I'm empowered, you know, I was giving you a sword or a gun or, you know, this extra strength to throw the ball, you know, in Madden football or the park, you know, in NHL 2007. I did it, very good one. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is really something that was addressing a need of people, people being, you know, the super me of, of, uh, of being empowered by video games. Today, I'm going to add two letters. And uh, it's just a very simple thought. People want to share. You know, it's not about now the technology. If you take, you know, the, the, the game that are today on Facebook or on mobile, they're not as impressive graphically than a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360. They're not as fancy. They're not as, you know, there's not as much storyline and death. But you share. People playing this game are more interested to play those experiences with their friends and talk about it than the pure experience of being the superhero. And if you look at it, if you go from, you know, this flow of to care about, you know, things, only to care to be a spectator, then to be the actor, the main protagonist, you know, and, 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 and it's a very egotistic experience, to sharing the experience. I feel that this message, you know, that people are going through today, you know, this is something that is really happening. It is a heavy trend in society towards entertainment. You know, the metaphor here, I think it's like, as a society, to go from just being a spectator than just wanting to be an actor alone to afterward seeing that what's important is to being with other people and sharing this experience is a very positive message.